guys off grid cabin where the work is never done but we're doing it just for fun we hope you're having a fantastic weekend because we're getting a few things done and well as usual there's always got to be that what if and what happened so we started out today working on this tree and then the uh, oops happened the uh, bar on the chainsaw, the sprocket on the end of it, well, it broke. And so that kind of stopped us dead in our tracks. But we are getting a few things done around here anyway, so let me take you and show you what we got in store. Get this uh, log propped up off the ground because I've got an idea cooking for us. Specifically, what I want to do is get me an Alaskan chainsaw mill. And I'm thinking that these logs, because we've got a bunch of them around here now because we've cut so many trees down. But I'm thinking these logs, we mill them up into about three quarter inch uh, slabs. I think it would make pretty good interior walls for that bathroom that we've been talking about. Now that, we've uh, kind of put on hold for uh, a little bit because it's all about the dollars. But we do uh, intend to start back on that directly. Mrs. PC Guy has been uh, burning some brush today. Let me take you over and show you the, uh, that. What we've been doing is uh, burning these stumps. We just light a fire up around them, let it go, and just keep burning on it. Eventually, we burn these stumps out. It takes time, and this one is actually a little bit too green to burn on, but she already had a big pile of brush that she needed to get rid of, so I said, what the heck, light it up, and we'll see what happens. So, we're probably gonna wait until next spring and let this continue to season out and dry out some more, and once that happens, uh, I think we'll have a little better luck with this. Now, I'm going to take you over because it can't all be about work around here. We've got to have a little fun every once in a while. So stick around and uh, I'm going to show you something really cool. Anybody for pizza? Because we're going to make some off-grid cast iron skillet pizza. Let's get started. We're going to start with two cups of flour. Then we're going to take, we're going to use up a little yeast. I got a bag here with all my goodies in it, and I got plenty of goodies here to work with. So we're going to use up some uh, yeast. Cause we're gonna do all this from scratch. Got my yeast in here, and we're gonna put just a little bit of water in there. Just enough to get that yeast wet. Mix that up real good. I'm looking for something else that I needed here. As usual. I can't find my butt with both hands. Where'd you put sugar, babe? It's in that, right there. This, that 
plastic bag over there, babe. This one? No. Oh, this one. That one. Duh. <laughs> Well, why you brought me all this much sugar? I just put some in there because we can leave it up here. Oh, is that what it was? We're going to take a little bit of this sugar. Oh, use your finger. Why? It don't take just a couple of peaches. Mrs. PC guy asked me, says, where's your recipe at? I said, right here. Real men don't need a recipe. Mm -hmm. But we're going to put a little bit, just a tiny bit of sugar in here. Just take, get that uh, yeast cooking real good. Notice how that kind of foamed up just a little bit? That's what we want. This water needs to be at room temperature or slightly warmer uh, when you take and do this. And we're going to put that right there in the, uh, into the mixing bowl with the flour. Rinse that out just a little bit. We're gonna start adding some water up in here. We just gonna keep adding water up into, in, into this until we get it good and mixed up. And Now, if you're wondering what this uh, piece of stainless steel is, you need a good cooking surface to do this kind of stuff on. I bought this from an eBay vendor. Now, what this is, this is a lid for a uh, commercial industrial steam table. Of course, they're food grade, which uh, is absolutely perfect the uh, thing about this sort of stuff. You can always tighten and adjust it later as you need to. You want to lick the bowl there, babe? No. No? She wouldn't know what to do if I didn't aggravate her and uh, tease her a little bit. Now we're going to start working this old dough around. It's still a little bit uh, too wet. 
for my taste. But that's okay, because we're going to make it uh, work. See how that's taking and uh, getting a little firmer there? That's what you want. Still had, in spite of everything, had a bunch of it stick to my hands. to the damn gum ties. Stainless there a little bit. It means it's still too wet. If it's sticking like that, it's too wet. pizza dough expert. I definitely ain't no Chef Ramsay, but this is still going to come out all right. Chef Ramsay was here. He'd tell me, not good enough, or whatever profanity he wants to use on any given day. And believe me, he can come up with plenty of them, can't he? No, I ain't gonna sit here and twirl this around and uh, like uh, uh, an Italian pizza chef. I wished I was that good. I'm not gonna pretend I am. See how that's starting to work right now that you can take and uh, work it around and it's not sticking to everything? That's what you want. Because I got it way too wet when I first started there. That's why you need that stainless steel there so you can take, sit there and work that around. Get it, get it uh, needed good. And what we're going to do now. I'm not 
waste it. I got that pizza dough way too wet when I first started there. Practice makes perfect. So, all right, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take us a damp uh, rag. We're going to cover that dough up and we're going to let it sit there and rise for about 45 minutes and do its thing. And so we're going to take a break while Mother Nature is taking its course and then we'll come back and pick up where we left off. All right, the dough has risen. Let's take a look. Now, full disclosure, uh, we took and uh, decided this uh, dough was still a little bit more damp than it needed to be, so uh, I did a little bit more working off camera on it. So, let's get this thing going. Always put a little bit of uh, dry flour on your uh, surface there. Heck, that stuff's still a little bit damper than I wanted it to be. That's all right. It's going to be all right. You know, sometimes when you do a project like this, you live and learn, and you uh, make adjustments, and after you've done it, you know, a half a dozen times or so, you kind of know exactly what you need to make it all work out. We're going to make a pretty thick crust here. I wish I could learn how to take and uh, do the old spin it around on my finger thing. We're going to start off here with uh, a little garlic on this. You can't have too much garlic on your pizza. You have to put all the ingredients in before you put it in the pan? No, no, oh. no, hang on. Now, Mrs. PC guy made a little boo boo. She took, left olive oil at the house. So we're gonna have to pinch it here a little bit. We'll just use a little bit of uh, standard uh, cooking oil. 
Like I say, I would prefer to have olive oil for this project. See, this is going to be a thick crust pizza. I just work that around in that uh, cast iron skillet. You want that dough to uh, be about the same thickness all the way around. See here how I got that up, uh, traveling up the sides of that? We're gonna have us a nice, thick, crushed pizza. Now, I cheated. I used the El Cheapo uh, store-bought uh, sauce. Never fails, I can't, oh, there we go. I was wondering where this run off to. The thing about pizza like this, the rules are there ain't no rules. You make this up the way that uh, you want to make it up. Got our mozzarella shredded uh, cheese. Get tongue tied there, ain't I? This sucker don't want to come open. Ain't that how plastic always works? Got the knife over there. Use the knife. Ow. Isn't that why I have you around to tell me how to do this stuff? Melted. Yeah, it did get a little warm sitting out here. Mm -hmm. That's all right. It's going to get a whole lot warmer here in a minute. Don't put it all on the bottom, save some for the top. Like I said, uh, a while ago, it's what I have you here for. Tell me how to do everything. Uh-huh. You make your own damn pizza. You, uh, you, want, you don't like how I'm putting it together. All right. We got some mozzarella cheese. How about some pepperoni? Got, man, you can't have a pizza without pepperoni. That was kind of folded over. It's already looking good. Now the cool thing about this is, this is your pizza. Make it up how you want to. You can put what you want on there. So I'm gonna go with some black olives. I love black olives on pizza, I ain't gonna lie. Mushrooms. Gotta have some mushrooms. We 
We're gonna put a little basil on this. And Mrs. PC guy wouldn't let me put what I wanted on this pizza. I wanted some uh, jalapenos. He didn't tell me to buy it when I bought the ingredients. Cause I knew you'd raise hell if I took did. So I have here some uh, bell pepper and some onion. We're gonna get a little bit of both of them on there. about that. Now, all right, now I'm gonna make you happy. Put some more mozzarella on top of all that. You ain't gonna get nothing like this at uh, Domino's, I can tell you that. Does that not look good? Now, come over here just a minute. I got my... handy dandy charcoal going here. That is warm. Now, with uh, doing this in a cast iron skillet where there's no feed on it or anything, you need something to hold that uh, cast turn skillet up off the, uh, which is why I have these little two pieces of concrete block in here. Hey, improvise. Now what I got here is my lid for my Dutch oven. We're gonna take, we're gonna set that right on there because it fits right on top of that cast iron skillet with no problem. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let that go for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll check and see what its progress looks like. All right, let's check this pizza. Careful. Oh, that's hot. This is why we wear gloves. Take a look at that. That pie there is. Sizzling. Well, we may need, I may still need the glove on, mm -hmm. on one hand here, cause I gotta, we're gonna have to let this cool for just a minute here and quit sizzling. Take the whole tray in the house because the tray's got to be washed eventually anyway. Well, we can do that. All right, my my uh, my boss said take it in the house, so we're gonna do that. So give us a minute and we'll be right back. All right, let's get this pizza out and see what we've got.
take a look at that. Does that not look good? Let's see what we can do about cutting this up. One thing to keep in mind when you're cooking something like this is you need to keep a very close check on it. This will cook a lot faster than you think it will. Side note, when you're cooking pizza, make sure you have a pizza slicer, which I went off and left at home. Not only the pizza slicer, but you probably need a real plate, not a paper plate. Now this is a particularly thick crust. It probably would have been a very good idea to have used a little less pizza dough in the crust. Because that knife he's using is not that sharp. <laughs> This type of thing is uh, when you're doing a pizza like this, you make the rules. So we're still not cut through the pizza to crust all the way over here. You can hear it crunching too. that thick before that's why it, so uh why it took so long I'm gonna hold the light up here yeah because look at that now the $64 question is how does it taste A side note on that dough, if you do use that much dough, you can always cut it in half and make it into two pizzas. Yeah. Instead of having one really, really thick uh, crust. And, the, the, and if you, you listen, you can hear the crust. Uh, it's, the crust is crunchy. Some from Mrs. PC guy. So uh, I'm gonna have lunch uh, now, and uh, well, we absolutely appreciate you watching. Give this a try. This uh, this is gonna knock your socks off. And remember, their rules are there ain't no rules. Put what you want on there. Until next time, uh, remember to hit that thumbs up, and we appreciate you watching, and uh, thanks for watching.